My brother Tommy was born in 79 and he is currently 33 years old and he has been incarcerated for 17 years under the sentence of life without parole. He was sentenced when he was 16 years old and at the time when we were waiting for him to be sentenced he was actually facing the death penalty also and I remember actually praying that he would get the death penalty because I didn't want him to have to spend his life in prison. I wanted to know that there would be an end. juvenile system was created for a reason. Developmentally, most juveniles don't have the capacity to understand what they've done and what they're doing, what these actions mean in the long run. So at the end of the day, the juvenile system was built so that we can rehabilitate these children so that they can maybe have a chance at a normal life one day. By taking that away from them, we're shoving them into a society full of gangsters and more heinous criminals who are more adult and who really do have the capacity to know these things by the time they reach the age where they can understand what they've done it's already too late they're already incarcerated as adults it's well known scientifically and medically that their brain isn't developed yet at these young ages and they're and every kid's brain develops at a different it's the frontal cortex every kid's brain develops at a different rate so you could take a kid who may do something at 11 or 12 or 13 and then when his brain develops he'll realize how horrible that was. From what I understand he ended up falling in with the wrong crowd and within a period of like three months he burned out a third of his brain on meth. My brother was awake for 24 days the night of the murder. Oh my God. Wow. And I can honestly say when somebody asked me how I feel about my brother's decision that he made that night to murder that boy. I can honestly tell you that my brother wasn't there to make a decision. My brother was in a paranoid, delusional state. He was not this horrible person who just wanted to take this person's life. He was not, he was not in his right mind in any way, shape, or form. And for them to say that he was an adult is just ludicrous. My brother was a kid. He was a total kid. He had no responsibilities. He had a grandma that made every meal that he ate. He was not an adult in any way, shape, or form. He couldn't vote, he couldn't watch R-rated movies. Technically, legally, he wasn't allowed to have sex, he couldn't sign a lease, he couldn't rent an apartment, but he stood in front of a particular man who wears a particular robe and instantly became an adult, and that's what allowed him to be sentenced to life without parole. You know, it has to be a case-by-case -case basis. You have to take every kid based on his, his life history, the type of crime, the number of victims, the type of victims, the type, the, the, the heinous nature of the crime. You have to take all those things into consideration. Unfortunately, the thing that I don't like is that it's left to a group of district attorneys sitting around at a table to make that decision about whether or not they're going to go after the kid for adult level crimes or just charge him as a juvenile. Once they make that decision, then they have to go to a judge and they have to prove to a judge that this is the type of case that should be in the adult system and not in the juvenile system. And then the judge makes the final decision. And uh, the other guy said, oh, let's, let's go rob that 7-Eleven. Uh, and my son said, no, because he, my son didn't have no reason to rob because he had money. Mm -hmm. He had money with him, you know. And then, uh, and then he said, no. And then he stopped and they, they went there and, and that guy was another high school guy that they knew. And, uh, and finally he said, uh, they went to another store. And then uh, when he went to the, the liquor store, the other guy told the guy he wanted some beer.
and my son bought a pack of cigarettes. And the tape that they, they have on my son, it says, don't shoot him, you know, don't shoot him. And mm -hmm. the tape got lost. The policeman can't find the tape. My other son mm -hmm. already went to San Francisco trying to find that tape. Mm -hmm. They can't find that tape where they, it shows him that he's innocent because mm -hmm. the other guy shot the, the clerk. Um, the other guy shot the clerk. And then my son mm -hmm. said, no, don't shoot him, don't shoot him. Mm -hmm. okay. He's been in there uh, uh, 32 years, and I see him like twice a year, twice a year because it's a very long trip over there. And he was 17 when... Yeah, 17. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because daddy was... We currently have a piece of legislation. It's in front of the assembly right now. Should be going up for a vote anytime soon. It's Senate Bill 9, and Senator Yee is the author. And what Senate Bill 9 would do is it would afford juveniles sentenced to life without parole in the state of California. It would afford them three opportunities for their file to be reviewed. If their file were reviewed and they were to meet very stringent specific criteria, then they could be considered for a resentencing hearing by the same judge that sentenced them. And, and this wouldn't happen until 15, 20, or 25 years into their sentence. I spent like 12 years, 13 years, believing that not only did I not have a voice, but that I didn't deserve to have a voice. Now, I realize that I do have a voice and we need to change things and I am so proud to be a part of trying to change things and my brother was part of something that was very, very, very horrible and from that, instead of just staying in the horribleness and saying, I have a brother that murdered someone and he's in prison and I'm just going to stay here, I said, no, I'm going to take and keep stepping up and stepping up and I'm going to keep educating people and putting love out there. and trying to help heal society because where we're going right now I wouldn't want to bring a child into this world.